Hello, it's Sandy again from SpectrumNoir.com um, and today we're going to be playing with the Spectrum Sparkle pens again um, but we're going to be doing a full watercolour picture using the new stamps that were launched with the Spectrum Sparkles um, and it was the from the Fla Floral Fantasy I think it's called um, you can find them on Crafters Companions website, I will leave a link um, these all of the stamps in the set had the sort of large areas to be coloured so that people so you could get the most from your um, sparkle pens um, rather than just using the clear to go over something. So that's what we're going to be running through today, um, and we're going to look at watercolouring this um, lovely poppy. So what we first thing we did is I have already embossed it because I was the heat gun's noisy on the tape. So I've already embossed it um, with um, Versamark ink and then I went over the top with Frontage um, to be a bit different and to go with the sparkle from um, the sparkle pens. So that's what we need. We need some water and we need my favourite brush. So just get my brush ready. This is, as you know, my favourite one. And all I'm going to be using is the Spectrum Sparkle and it's um, Solar Red. That's the only one I'm going to be using. Um, so that you can see that even if you only get the three set of Spectrum Sparkles um, and buy them over time, then you can get the most out of just one pen. Um, and also don't forget, to, because they are water-based, um, to you can quite happily mix them with your Spectrum Aquas to get even more colours. So I'm going to start by just putting some down, give it a bit of a shake and putting some down on my glass mat which is now very shimmery um, you're going to have to ignore the state of my um, fingers and my under my fingernails because I've been doing mixed media today so I'm a bit my hands under it's a bit grubby but never mind um, right so we're going to start so when you look at look at the, the um, image the first thing you want to be doing is to look at where the shadows are so they're the the bits we put in first. Now on this stamp, um, these first two flowers are the flowers that are at the front. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to put some sh lay the shadow down along there. Now the reason, the great thing about embossing it first, especially when you're not, when you're practicing or you're just messing about with watercolor, is that it actually keeps the paint in the water um, and the ink inside the area you're working on because this is a resist so no matter how much I paint over it it's just going to roll straight back off um, which is fabulous so we've got that dark colour down so then all we now need to do is we just need to go in and just blend with a virtually dry brush and blend that colour out to the lighter area where there's not as much shadow. So if you just go in and just do small motions going into the dark area and it drags that paint out. So we're just going to work on a base coat because what we're going to do is we're going to come back and do um, a second lot of magic over the top that will finish off the colour. So we're just going to go through and lay down our first round of colour uh, down and I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and then I'm just going to work with the colour that I've got and bring that out to the lighter areas. So just working with that colour that you've got and taking it out to the darker areas and then bring it down from the top because it helps to blend those dark lines in and now what we're going to do is um, I want just a wet brush and on the edge of the stamp you'll see that there's um, when you're talking about flowers there's usually some sort of movement some some sort of wave at the edge of the flowers so where it where the highest point is we're going to assume that that's where the light hits so we're going to go in with just water um, and like we did with the um, faux bleaching on the landscape tutorials that I've got up there, we're literally just faux, faux bleaching and taking some of that colour out where the lighter areas are going to be. 
So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to follow that round now for each of the petals, because we're going to come round when that's dry and do a second, a second round. So I'm going to use the same techniques on this petal, and because this one's the one that's right at the back, I'm going to assume that my shadow, because my shadow, my light's coming onto my picture from the front, which is unusual for me because it usually comes from the side. But I'm going to go with it. So my light's coming from the front because it's easier to show on this flower the differences in colours. So there we go. So we've got some dark going on. So now I'll take some of that paint off my brush um, and start to blend that out. Stop. I'm probably getting the shadow every time I move my head. There we go, talk loudly. There we go, right. So exactly the same, you're going to go into those edges and if it started to dry a little bit, just tease it out. Little tiny circular motions will start activating, just overlapping slightly so that you don't drag all of it out if you don't want to. Um, it's entirely up to you how much ink that you want running out. what kind of effect you want to get from your watercolour. That's one of the fun things about watercolour is you never get the same, same effect twice. Um, because it's very, it's, it is to a degree unpredictable. Um, right. So now again, this is, we've got, a, we've got a couple of different areas on this one that are obviously high. So we've got this one here where the light would hit after it, after it comes up there. And then we've got this point here, which would also be catching the light. There we go, right, now onto this one. And again, this one's the one just behind this second front one. So whizzing around, nice dark bit on the piece that's hidden behind, and then dark coming out from the middle. Nice and dark. And then we're going to work through and just wash that colour out. So damp brush again. So we're trying, it's just, you, your brush just needs to be barely wet because we're using the water that's actually in um, the paint, in the pens, because they are water markers. So because they're water, there's already a amount of liquid in the pen, so we don't always want to be adding lots and lots and lots of water when we're painting with them. Sometimes we just go with what's available in Sometimes you just have to go with what's in the pen. Right, that's that one done. So now we're going to look at the two front ones. So if we're coming down, those ones will curve underneath. They'll curve under. So we're going to look at um, using the light. Uh, so we've got these veins that the stamp's given us. So we're going to assume that they're dark but also underneath here will also be a dark area because that's where the petals go under. So I'm going to clean that off and now take that colour up to the top where we're meeting the top of the petal that then goes over with our eye line into the dark of the petal behind. So the top of this one is really going to be quite pale because it's taking most of the light from the flower. Except for this, this edge and there you go. Right. Perfect. Again, don't brush just blend out those sharp edges. 
just take away the edges and let it settle. So one of the things with working with watercolour is that one of the things working with watercolours is that you do need to let them settle. Um, it's also it makes true of markers as well when you're working with alcohol markers, is that sometimes it's it's best to get to a certain point and then go and have um, a cup of tea, come back and give it a chance to to do its thing and soak into the paper and blend the colours together um, properly. Otherwise, um, you can overdo. Um, the colouring and you can overdo the, sh especially when you put adding extra shadows um, because it may well blend in by itself when it settles into the paper and dries properly it may well have already been okay um, and you can, it sometimes can be quite surprising when you go back and you're like oh I thought I was going to have to change that and you don't so a cup of tea and a piece of cake is what you need and then come back and wait for it to dry. But I'm not. I don't have that luxury today, so um, I'm not going to wait. Make you wait while I have a cup of tea and a piece of cake for round two. So we're just going to go with it and hope it's it's dried enough for me to move on to the next bit with you. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to take that colour off because I don't want it. And. There's always one, always one petal every time I do this that I over, over water. There we go. It's like real plants, can't keep them alive. Right, so what we've got is you should already be able to see you've got some shimmer coming from the frontage embossing powder, but you've also got the shimmer coming through, which when you sort of look at how pale I've and how much I've dragged this colour out, there is still shimmer now running through the whole flower. Okay, right, so that was round one. So what we're going to do in round two, when we go back round the petals, is a lot quicker because all we're doing now is going back in and making those, sh defining those shadows just that little bit more and just coming up from the centre. So you're looking at the centre having quite a bit. And now where we put, where we took the faux bleach, the colour out, the in between in the valleys would be a little bit of a shadow so we're going to start to add the little details like that that will bring bring the petals to life um, so we're just going to go back round going back in um, ideally you would have would have gone away um, and let this dry a little bit more or heat set it um, because you will have to trust me that when you come back um, it will have settled and some of the areas that you thought were quite harsh will actually soften down by themselves um, as the paints continue, um, the water um, content continues to um, be absorbed by the paper. So there we go, right, so happy with that. And we get a really deep area there. Right. And um, and don't worry, you see, the other thing while I'm thinking about it, about, see I want cake now, um, the other thing while I'm thinking about it is um, don't worry about the um, ink drying on your glass mat or on a tile or whatever it is you use, a piece of acetate, because, um, because they're water based, is that even if it dries you can come back and reactivate them later. So that really doesn't matter, because you're not going to waste any... Um, especially if you do do it on a, um, a tile or something because you can obviously move it out of your way if you're doing something else or you craft on the table or on a lap tray or whatever. So there we go. Right, so I've um, about, this one was very wet so I'm going to be very, a bit more careful. I'm just picking up the last of the ink that's on my mat. Um, I'm just going to come in this one here. And then we've got, it's coming in, I'm just mumbling to myself while, um, so if you couldn't quite hear me then I'm sorry. I am just happily in my little happy place, painting along and mumbling away to myself. So that I don't bore you too much really. Right, so I've now, I've cleaned my brush totally and it's now just damp. Um, and I was just going in and just, some of the, some of the really harsh areas, um, I'm just, mainly because I can't walk away. 
I'm one of them people that, oh, I'll just do that, I'll just do that, and then I end up having to redo something. Um, so what we've got now, and then the, the final touch, once that's completely dried, which obviously mine isn't, um, what I would do is um, I would then go in direct to paper with the pen and just go in um, where the real, real, real shadows would be. Um, just to give it that last bit of depth, especially in the centre of the flower, for this back portion of the flower behind these two front ones, so that you can really, really see the brilliant um, brush nibs on these go down to a real, real fine point. So I can get in really quite tight to the lines, um, and I'll say that and slip now. Um, I can get in really tight to the lines so I can get some emphasis, um, so little tiny little tiny notches if, um, on the ends of the petals um, where you put your shadows and you really, so I, I really 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 need somebody, you know like a little, a little craft, crafting elf or my, um, I've got a little, little monster thing up on my shelf. Um, that we got from holiday and it really needs to speak and say stop walk away because I will just be here all night and this video will be several hours long right so my crafting little thing in my head is saying pack it in and stop now so I'm going to um, so I've just just literally been round um, and that will will settle but if you're not happy with um, some of the lines um, that have not maybe not blended in literally this is this is almost dry now um, and and just literally just take that ink that you've just laid down because obviously it is a heavy saturation and just just touch the edges and get it moving into into the into the paper um, because there still will be some unless you come back to it the next day there is enough water within the pen just for you to be able to take the edge off the darkness but there you go one pen and sparkle and there's one of the flowers and I really think that the sparkly embossing powder that works its magic. And then it's just a matter of, um, of either cutting it out or mounting it however you want to. Um, on my finished version, um, I just mounted mine um, onto the front of a card, put a frame around it. Um, and I used a contrasting colour um, of Distress Ink. I think this was um, Blueprint Sketch. Um, and, and it was really just because I was going to use it as an example to show you but you really can put any colour you like around it so one pen one Spectrum Sparkle pen and a paintbrush and some, some watercolour card and you can play and lose yourself absolutely brilliant thank you very much for watching um, it's, this has been Sandy